but I advise you against creating ripples by using geometry. Instead of this, I recommend using material, because geometry is hard to edit. Right now, ripples look interesting and realistic, and we can continue to adjust the bump parameter. So for now, let's add... Now, here's another important thing. Make sure water overlaps with the pool walls. Otherwise, you'll end up with cobbler planes, which may cause artifacts. Hi everyone, today we're gonna create pool material. It looks like many students struggle with creating pool material. Although it's not hard at all as it happens. So I decided to make a video on this topic. And first of all, let's make a brief introduction. So if you Google pool images, what you'll see is that not all pools have ripples and caustics. Take a look over here. As you can see, in some photos, water surface is totally flat. So no ripples to be seen. But here, for example, we do have some ripples. So it all pretty much depends on the conditions in which the photo shoot was taken place or the effects that we're trying to imitate and visualization. So we can choose to create ripples or we can make the water surface flat. It's up to you. But I advise you against creating ripples by using geometry. Instead of this, I recommend using material because geometry is hard to edit. So suppose you accidentally collapse a modifier stack. In this case, if you happen not to like the achieved ripple effect, you'll have to recreate the geometry from scratch. Pool ripples are usually very subtle. And the advantage of geometry based ripples is that they affect the water's edge you won't be able to achieve that effect when using material. It won't create visible waves at the water's edge. But the good news is we don't need them because pools don't usually have big ripples. So I recommend using material to create ripples. All right, let's get started. Let's set up pool material and I'll be checking with the references from time to time. So let's pick the main reference this one for example and I have a scene here uh, from our training course instead of water we have clay material here in the original project the bottom of the pool was covered with dark blue tiles but the problem is that dark blue tiles will prevent us from seeing a watercolor and a caustic effect as they are so that's why I painted the bottom of the pool white so that we can properly see the water. So I have material editor open on the second screen. We have gray Karana MTL assigned to water. No extra settings yet. All right, so let's set it up. So I have interactive render running. All right, so let's start setting up water material. First come basic settings. We set diffuse to zero. Our water is basically colorless. So next we set reflection to one and Fresnel IOR to 1.3. As for reflection color, we can either increase or decrease it a little. It doesn't bother me much whether or not my IOR is perfectly correct from a physical standpoint. So water can be considered either a dielectric or conductive material. So either way, it's far from being metal. So I recommend setting up IOR and color based on the result that you want to achieve. So next we need to set up refraction or transparency. We'll set it to one and the pool turn transparent. 
the preview has updated. This is how it looks now. The water doesn't look realistic though. It's totally transparent. Nothing is going on here. So we need to set up water color based on the type of water we have. It can be green bloom water, like in a swamp, or it can be bright blue, like the sort of water you see in swimming pools. It all depends on how clear the water is and what amount of non-transparent particles it contains. So in this case, we need to achieve a blue chlorinated shade. For that purpose, we need a parameter called volumetrics and triple S. So we need to choose absorption color. It's the color of transparent objects like glasses, bottles, things like that. And water is no exception. So we'll pick a shade of blue and let's go for a, a darker shade. So your water may have a slightly different color than in the references. Don't let that confuse you because watercolor is also affected by pool tiles. Plus, water also has its shade. So, to achieve a pure watercolor, your pool should have a white bottom. This light blue shade looks good, I think. So, our color is very similar to it. All right, so let's just hit OK. But as you can see, nothing changes. I'll region select the pool to speed up the render. So for the absorption to work correctly, we need to set up the distance parameter. Set it roughly to 200 centimeters, let's say. And let's see how it's turning out. Good. Our water has turned light blue and I think that's enough. Now we can proceed to creating ripples. Once again, ripples can be different or they be, may be no ripples at all. Anyway, be careful with this effect. To create realistic looking ripples, we need to link a map to the bump slot. And let's create a more complex material. We'll go to general. Find the mix map, drag it to the slate material editor and link it to the bitmap. I'm sorry, the bump slot. And nothing has changed because the mix map is still empty. So next we take the noise map and link it to slot one. Now let's see how our ripples look like now. All right, the ripples are too big and well pronounced. So this doesn't look realistic at all. So let's take a look at the reference. Here, for example, ripples are smaller and form a more complex pattern. So let's go for an average ripple size. We don't want our ripples to be too big. The reference, for example, has perfect ripples. So we do double click on the noise map and set size to 20. Noise type is fractal. This will make the pattern more detailed. The ripples are still too big. So us artists always aim for subtlety. So let's decrease the bomb parameter. To double click on our main material and reduce bump by let's say 10 times to 0 0.1. So that looks better already. Ripples are moderate, but still kind of aggressive. So let's decrease it further to 0 0.05. All right, now Ripples look interesting and realistic, and we can continue to adjust the bump parameter. So for now, let's add another map. So what we'll do now is we we'll take the smoke map and we're going to link it to slot two of mix. 
There we go. And now we need to set up a mix mode. So double click on the mix map and set mix amount to 50. The two maps are mixed at 50-50 ratio. This is how the bump map looks now. And next we set the size of the smoke map. And let's make it 50 and move from there. Trying to find the right value. So that looks pretty good, I think. This is the effect I was aiming for. All right, so here is a, a common mistake I would like to warn you against. Your water object must be solid. Now, I notice that students tend to make a mistake when they use a plane to create water and place it on top of the pool. That's wrong. Because water bends light and Karana won't be able to correctly process that refraction. So water should be a solid object, a box. Here, the water object is made of plenty of polygons because the pool has rounded edges and the water goes over the side of the pool. When creating water in your own project, go ahead and use a simple box. Now, here's another important thing. Make sure water overlaps with the pool walls. Otherwise, you'll end up with coplanar planes, which may cause artifacts. It's when two polygons lie on the same plane, or they may be... There may be another situation when water doesn't reach the pool's walls, leaving a kind of layer of air in between, and that's also wrong. Water needs to touch the pool walls. Only then it will look realistic. All right, so now let's go ahead and create caustics. To set up caustics for a Corona material, we first need to enable it. To do that, we'll go to material settings and check the caustics box. Keep in mind that caustics significantly slows down the render. Now, with that said, you should only enable caustics for objects that you know for sure to produce this effect. Crystal glasses and tableware, for example, or in this case, a swimming pool. Okay, so we checked the caustex box, but nothing changed. The swimming pool doesn't look very good because we also need to enable caustex in render settings. We'll go to the performance tab and enable fast caustic solver. Let's take a look at the render. Caustics is being rendered separately after lighting. We can see a nice caustic effect. There are spots on the bottom, light refractions. The size of ripples defines the pattern on the bottom of the pool. The render is progressing very slowly. It might be a good idea to render the pool separately, actually. So you can consider first rendering the final scene in high quality and then rendering the pool separately. So this will save you some time. There's something else you should keep in mind, by the way. As you can see, here we have a render element called C shading caustics. Here it is. We add it to the list and it appears here in this drop down menu. We can apply this render element in Photoshop in screen or lighting mode, depending on what effect you want to achieve. We can apply clay material to all objects, render a caustic separately as fake and then add that caustic effect in Photoshop during post-production. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.